Good morning, welcome to So Let's Sell with Wendy and Happy New Year to everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, today we're going to make this little panel. Um, it's called a bookshelf um, quilt because it looks like there are books um, stashed on a bookshelf. Um, it's really simple to make and it's a great way of using up all your scraps. Um, for some of the titles, all I've done is cut the salvage edges off some fabric, anything that's got writing on it, and it just gives the appearance of, let me just hold it a little bit closer, it gives the appearance of a book. Um, the shelf we're going to do today is this one, and then my um, intention is to do a series of shelves, but not with all books on, some will have vases on, um, and just different things like that. So. Um, what you'll need is a piece of black fabric measuring 15 by 10 inches and then for your actual books you just need varying widths and varying heights it's entirely up to you so I started off with this one here and I did it quite high then I popped a, a little thin one in and you can see and then I put one on the wonk because bookshelves often end up like that so you, you can see the general idea anyway let me bring you down to the show, sewing machine and I'll show you what to do right so here I've got my black fabric which is um, 15 by 10 inches and then I've got two strips of brown or this taupey colour that I've got for the top and bottom I've cut them at two inches wide and then for the sides I've cut one and a half and obviously the first thing we need to do is to actually sew the top and bottom onto the um, black fabric so let's just go ahead and do that right so I've put the top and bottom on and I've cut some books out in various widths, sizes, lengths and just laid them out roughly on the bookcase. Um, I've then got some, I've got some new fabric and I'm just gonna have a look at the salvages to see if um, they might be good for using as, as book titles. And this one is, so with a pair of scissors, I'll um, carefully cut them out. Let's have a look. I, I usually find it's a good idea to keep the salvages anyway. Um, because then if you particularly liked a piece of fabric that you got in a kit or something, you can always find out um, who made it or where it's from. So I've just got that for now, that will do. Let me just, oh, nearly lost a book. So, as you can see, it's got wind and fabric, so I'll cut there. And that will do as a title on one of the books. And um, just cut again. Now it's got um, a, fa um, what to call it, um, you know, a sort of frayed edge. I think we really need to cut that off, otherwise that will cause us a few problems when we are stitching things on. So that's that one. And I don't know if I'll just use that or not, I'm not sure. Um, I've also um, got some ribbon from my ribbon box. I tried to choose ribbon that wouldn't fray um, because when I was making the sample up, <laughs> some of them I just had to sort of scrap and um, because they were just fraying too much. Right, so I always cut my piece of ribbon slightly um, longer than needed. So that one can have gold on it. And I've got some, some pretty ribbon with um, houses on it. So that could either be a title or it could be like the book binder. Um, think I'd like to use that one then and then we'll put this one on top it's just really um, a matter of just playing with what you've got um, and that could look yeah that looks kind of bookish that kind of like Christmassy ribbon 
So we'll just pop that there. And, and I think we'll do the the red ribbon. Oh no, that wouldn't look that wouldn't look very good at all. Let's use the gold. And I think we'll just put one there. I mean it really is all of this is just a matter of a matter of preference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and stitch all these pieces of ribbon and um, pieces of uh, salvage edges um, onto my books. I have, um, searching in my stash, I found this piece of fabric that's got words on it, um, but they all appear to be like a road trip. But I guess, um, if I hold it still. I guess some of them you could cut out and they could go on the book. I might try that later. I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to um, bother for this sample. So I'll just go ahead and stitch these back on. Right, so I'm just going to stitch the, the title of the book on. And um, for this, I used a zigzag stitch, um, which was... 2.0 wide by 1.5 long. Um, it's quite tiny. I'll show you when I've finished. So you see that that piece of salvage worked out quite well. It says Sussex by Nancy Greer. Um, so now I'm going to put the, the top pieces of ribbon on. So for this one, I chose the gold. Now, I just sort of position it, I don't know, about half an inch from the top. It, it's wherever it looks best. And um, for that, I just use a standard... Um, straight stitch sorry I'm just <laughs> putting my machine machine back so let's just I made the piece of ribbon um, wider than I needed it if you oh, there we go if you cut it to size there's a chance that it'll pull um, so, you know, just adding an extra few centimetres on. So that's the top done. I'll quickly do the bottom. And again, I'm just eyeballing it really. I'm not measuring. So what do we all think about the lockdown then? It's a nightmare, isn't it? When we had the lockdown in November, I really thought that that would be it. You know, we, we've... Vaccines are here, everything's fine, and then I don't know what happened. I think people got a bit lax over Christmas, maybe, I don't know. So all I need to do now is just trim the ribbon off and move on to the next one. Right, so here we are. There's the one I've just done. I had a bit of a brainwave um, when I was doing it and if you just cut pieces of salvage that don't have any writing on it you can write on it I've used the um, there we go the marker pen that I use to write my quilt labels you know you write it and then put an iron on it and then it doesn't wash away and so I've made my own titles up and um, I also with the book that's on the wonk decided to try and round the corners to see if it made it look more like a book I'm not sure. Um, maybe you could um, let me have your comments. Do you think the book should be um, square or rounded corners? And when you've got your two panels together, you would 
stitch them together. Now I'm not sure whether you would actually need another top piece or whether that binding there would do for both. Oh, and I think that, yes, that does look better, doesn't it? So if you are going to do a number of these panels, don't put the top piece of um, binding on or border, that's it. Um, yeah, so, and then you can just add it to this one like that. Oops, if I stand back. And then it'd look kind of cute. I mean, obviously, these um, book panels, they can be as long as you like. I just did this size because it was easier for me to um, to sew them and, and to show you. But um, I think it's a really good idea to get rid of all those scrappy bits that are too good to throw away but not enough to make a quilt. Well, there you go. Um, anyway, please let me have any comments you have on those quilt blocks. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away and think of another um, applique project that we can do together. Um, there is another baby being born um, and you know I, I've made about three of these last year. Um, this, this, the one that this baby's for is not due until the end of January. Um, but then I found out um, a really lovely friend of mine is having a baby in seven weeks and that's the first we knew of it so it's all a bit panic sewing. So I might do um, a step-by-step -step guide on a different um, type of baby wall runner. Um, what was going to say? Oh yeah, the only thing with um, making these little blocks like this is the fabric fraying and it's a complete nightmare. The, the tiny um, zigzag stitch does help but I found um, if I got myself a little empty pot and my snips, we see them? Yeah, snips, and just held it in my hand and just folded the fabric over and snipped away any little fray bits. Um, obviously, if you'd done it with um, Bonder Web, you wouldn't have this problem because it would pre-stick and everything would look hunky-dory. Um, I mean, I love Bonder Web, but it can be really pricey. Um, and so with things like this, I like to just pin and go and see how it goes. So um, anyway, there it is, there it is. Um, Please let me know if you'd like me to do a video on anything special that you want to learn how to do or indeed anything that I've done before and you'd like to see um, a more detailed um, video on it. Um, anyway, take care everybody. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.